there and welcome back. Uh, now I've reinforced the uh, rear fender on the Sportster so I can carry some load on it. It's time to add a little bit more weatherproofing. Uh, might seem a bit irrational given that I've just chopped down the uh, front fender. Um, but I do ride it bike in the rain quite a bit and in the rain um, I just get jet washed at the back. So I want to put on a little rain protector, a little rear hugger if you like, like you find on the GS and quite a few other similar bikes nowadays. Uh, to stop that splash coming up uh, from the back. So let me show you what my thoughts are so far. Right, so where we are now is we've got a little bit of protection from the extended rear uh, mud guard or fender, which is what I wanted, but I'm still getting quite a lot that comes past um, basically anything that comes up this way and they get sucked in and anything that actually jet washes straight past so what I want to do is to block this section here now I have a bit of the old mud guard that I cut off that because of the same profile as mud guard would work quite nicely it has got these holes in it though which could be an issue um, I might have to do something about them or find a use for it so that would sit there quite nicely and I think do the job if it's too far back, every time I reverse the bike into a wall or something or touch something with the rear wheel, that's going to bang. So it wants to be far enough forward that it doesn't ever come into contact with anything. And it, but it doesn't want to be too far forward because then I'll miss spray this side. Um, and it just wants to cover far enough this way that uh, anything that comes off, and I would say anything from about here is probably going to be caught. So really it's this section. So about there is, I think, right, but how to hold it in place. What I did buy a little while ago were these uh, little blocks here. They're actually for a later Sportster, and these are axle uh, or lowering blocks. And the idea is that the, you, you bolt them on down here to the rear axle adjusters, um, and this bolt bolts through the axle hole and so they bolt down here and then instead of bolting the axle on here you bolt the axle onto one of these three positions and because you lean it back um, it lowers the back end of the bike but I'm thinking that these would be perfect mounting points for uh, the rear fender and then I just need some way of attaching this to this And for this, I've got this old bicycle stand, which has uh, a piece missing from here because I used it under here. So I know it welds quite well and it's quite strong. So I'm thinking that this will come from here about right with a bit of cutting and welding and it should all work. Now I did consider whether I should go single sided, but my experience is with this bike is that the vibration and such will kill anything that's not really solidly bolted. So I'm going to go two sided. It's going to be a bit heavier, it's going to be a bit ungainly, maybe, um, but it'll last a bit longer. And come to that, that is not light. I'd be better off using a bit of plastic or a bit of alloy, um, but I've got this and I have a bit of plastic or alloy that would be the right size. So for the start, I'm going to go with this. So that's the next project. Right, so let's see if these lowering blocks um, are of any use, if I can actually make them fit. They're quite thick steel, so if I need to cut them, drill holes in them, that's going to prove probably quite interesting. This plate isn't very thick and I think it's got a bit of a curve to it where it's gotten bent over the years by pulled in, being pulled in um, and those two reinforcing uh, uh, dents there it may have helped a bit but uh, they've only kept it strong that direction they've not kept it strong in this direction where the curve is. The new ones have much thicker plates here 
so they won't bend and that'll be much better. Now, coincidentally, this and this are not too dissimilar. Um, but looking at my shocks, I think I'm not sure that I have them aligned properly in the first place. So part of the exercise will be to make sure they actually sit up square. At the moment, I think they're sitting at a bit of an angle. So this is how the lowering blocks are supposed to work. That will slide on there and replace the existing one with the new adjuster coming back on. What should happen on the later bikes, this hole will line up with this in theory. And uh, then with that bolted in, you would simply bolt the shock back to one of these different positions, depending on how much backwards travel you actually wanted from the bike. Um, now in my case, I want to bolt this back in exactly the same place it was before, which is over here. And as you can see, my it's actually sagged a bit, so I'm gonna have to jack it back up to get it back on. But that's not my What I want to do at the moment is to see where that hole at the moment that hole is here so it's completely in the wrong place here and I think it's not even aligned but there seems to be plenty of metal both sides so I need a new hole around here now the question is whether or not it'll overlap into this hole in which case I'll need to fix that so let's make a model card's a bit too thick so if I take this piece of paper and just with my slightly dirty fingers and with that firmly set against the base of this create myself a template and cut the paper template Carefully held in place. So there's my target mark, um, as you can see it's slightly out of line with the centre line of the original hole, which is the rubber mount sportsters, um, and there's definitely going to be overlap here. <laughs>
that's drilled out as far as I can go with the uh, drill bits because I've only got up to 8 mil and this needs to come out to about 14 which is what this comb bit is reading yeah it's about 14 mil so the remainder is cone drill bit uh, done from both sides and then filed to fit now with the cone cutter I've got a hole that is approximately the right size though of course cone shaped so it's going to need filing out what I'm going to do here is to just cut this off across here so that I've got a slot um, putting it on the bike it needs to come back this way a little bit as well um, so I'm just going to have a slot rather than a nice round hole um, because I'm not holding the shocks on this is just to hold the rear hugger um, what I need this this is going to be move, stopping it moving backwards and forwards this plate here the purpose of this is to stop it twisting not to stop it moving backwards and forwards so this just needs to be um, a slot um, although for the shocks it might be nice to have it completely round um, I might consider uh, um, if I slot it enough to put up to weld a plate across the top um, but we'll see how that's going Brackets are now mocked up and in place There's still some more work to be done on them. They need shaping, painting, a little bit of welding, finishing, and, and so forth. Um, but that is the uh, general idea. So now I've got some mounting points um, to which to attach the rear hugger. So, on to the next move.